Well, the most common ocular surface disease per se has to be dry eye, right? That's a queen of all ocular surface diseases. It affects a significant number of the population of the United States. And as the population grows older, we can only expect to see more and more patients with dry eye. There are other less common but very severe forms of ocular surface disease, such as those that we see in patients that have rare diseases like Steven Johnson syndrome and other forms of systemic diseases that affect the eye. And one particularly severe form of dry eye that we see is actually secondary to bone marrow transplant, which is very interesting because if you look at the past 10 years, our lifespan of patients that had some form of blood cancer and were treated successfully with bone marrow transplant are living longer and longer, yet their quality of life has been diminished greatly uh, mainly due to the dry eye disease, and that's very interesting. So the most common symptoms people have when they have dry eyes include itching, burning, and a foreign body sensation, the feeling they have a piece of sand or some people describe it as shards of glass in the eye, in the more severe forms, of course. But one symptom that is often overlooked, and it's actually very, very common, is waxing and waning vision or blurry vision that comes and goes. Usually in the patient population that has dry eyes and is, tends to be patients over 60 or 70 years of age, this tends to be confused with cataracts as well. And this is very important to make the difference. We have a great number of patients that are very unhappy with their cataract surgery results, uh, even in cases where cataract surgery was done perfectly with excellent results because they still have blurred vision. And many of those patients, we can actually pinpoint the cause to dry eye disease. So ideally, if we were to make the diagnosis before the patients had the cataract surgery, that would improve our results for cataract surgery, but more importantly, it would improve patient satisfaction after the cataract surgery, which is something we're very, very keen and aware of right now. There are many forms of dry eye, and now we classify them, and there are several algorithms we can use to pinpoint the exact cause of the dry eye, in most cases at least. So what happens is that there's two broad categories, there's many we'll leave behind for this conversation, but there's two broad categories of dry eye disease. Those that people that actually don't produce enough tears, and then there's the other group of people that don't produce tears in good quality. So it's the quality of the tear problem. So the problem with that later subset of patients is that they have enough quantity of tears, but the eye has sensors in it that can detect when it's dry. So the eye tells the brain that the eye is dry and the brain says, well, let's produce more tears. Patients are overflowing with tears and as, as we said before, they can have tearing as one of their main symptoms, main presenting symptoms for dry eye. And what happens then is that the tears just overflow, they overcome the capacity of the eye to absorb those tears through the tear duct. And that's very important and a common missed cause of tearing and as a presenting sign of dry eye. Well, we usually use a stepladder approach to treat dry eye. We start with the simple things most people can do at home that are relatively inexpensive, and then we move on to more expensive and complicated treatments. So usually step number one would um, include tears that you can actually find in most pharmacies, applying heat to the eyelids, and other measures that should be guided by your eye health professional. Step ladder number two starts getting a little bit more complicated and can usually include what we call punctal plugs, sometimes uh, anti-inflammatory medication. Many patients are aware, they can see commercials on television or magazines about specific products for dry eye, some forms of um, oral or topical antibiotics, and some form of diet supplementation in their diet and or vitamins, special vitamins for dry eye. Then we move on to step ladder number three, which can get a little bit more complicated and can definitely require a lot more care and unfortunately becomes more expensive as well. Mainly here, we're usually talking about special dry eye contact lenses or even tears that we can make out of your own blood that we call serum tears. <laughs> 